morning and a very warm welcome to today's Eucharistic celebration. I'm offering this Mass for you, dear people, so I invite you to bring to mind what would you like to offer this Mass for. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured a full adoption to sonship, grant we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Daniel. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out before him. A thousand thousands served him, 
and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, they came one like a son of man and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Your response is, the Lord is king most high above all the earth. Together, the Lord is king most high above all the earth. The Lord is king, let earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Cloudness, cloud and darkness surround him. Justice and right are the foundation of his throne. Your response? The Lord is king most high above all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the face of the Lord, before the face of the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. Your response? The Lord is king most high above all the earth. For you indeed are the Lord most high above all the earth exalted far above all gods. Your response? The Lord is King, most high above all the earth. Kindly rise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead might mean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All of us experience suffering in various ways. We have health problems for ourselves, our family members. There are relationship problems. During this pandemic, many have lost their loved ones. Many have lost their jobs, their financial problems. In all of this, today's feast of the transfiguration of the Lord assures us that no matter what suffering we go through, no matter what difficulties we face, God will triumph over sin and death. And it is precisely through our sufferings, through our crosses, that we will be glorified. The first reading was from the book of Daniel. It was written at a time when the people of Israel were going to great trials and sufferings. And in spite of all this, yet it confidently proclaimed that ultimately God's purpose will triumph. Daniel was given a prophetic vision where he saw divine court proceedings against humanity in the heavenly sanctuary. He saw the book of life and the books of deeds open to give evidence for and against mankind. The ancient one is God the Father. The one like the Son of Man is the Messiah King who looks like a human being. In scripture, the title Son of Man is usually used for a human being, as when the title is applied to Ezekiel. 
but the title son of man was also a favorite title with that jesus used for himself but when jews when jesus used the title son of man for himself he used it not only in the sense of his humanity but also in the sense of this messiah king from daniel's vision for example when jesus spoke to the high priest he said from now onwards you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven when jesus said that the high priest immediately tore off his clothes and accused jesus of blasphemy because he correctly understood that jesus was referring him to himself that he was claiming to be the divine messiah mentioned in daniel's vision now this vision was received by daniel in 6 bc but it was only fulfilled when jesus the messiah king was victorious in his humanity when in his humanity he received divine rule over all the earth by his victory over sin and death through the cross like the book of daniel where in spite of the sufferings they confidently proclaim that ultimately god's purpose will be fulfilled we need to face our crosses our difficulties knowing that god's purpose will be fulfilled in our lives in the gospel we have the disciples and apostles that would have been frightened and discouraged because in the previous chapter in chapter 8 jesus had first for the first time predicted that he was going to be killed and so jesus takes with him three of them peter james and john up a high mountain going up a high mountain is symbolic of jesus helping them reach new levels of understanding if you look up the gospel the passage actually begins by saying after six days jesus took with him peter and james and john and led them up a high mountain by themselves the reason why mark specified that it was after six days meaning the seventh day is because he wanted to show that jesus is now the new moses in the book of exodus moses had gone up mount sinai on the seventh day and when moses went up mount sinai he took along with him aaron the high priest and nadab and abihu who were brothers and just we see jesus doing something similar here he takes with him peter who's like the high priest of the new covenant along with james and john who were brothers now when moses went up the mount sinai the glory cloud of the lord the shekina the presence of god came down on mount sinai and god spoke to moses from the cloud we see something similar happening here when moses and elijah are talking with jesus the cloud overshadows them and a voice from the cloud speaks this is my beloved son listen to him so god was revealing jesus to be his divine son jesus allowed the apostles to experience a manifestation of his glory so that they would realize that not only is he fully human but he is also divine he is god himself however the transfiguration is not just a revelation of jesus's divinity it is also a revelation of god as trinity because we see all three persons of the trinity appear at the transfiguration you have god the father speaking from the cloud you have the son who's revealed by the voice and by the transfiguration and you have the holy spirit revealed in the glory cloud jesus allowed the apostles to experience god as trinity and that is why peter said rabbi it is good that we are here and he wanted to make three tents he wanted to remain there to be there in the glory contemplating the trinity but they had to come down it was not yet time for them to enter into the glory of the trinity this was just a taste or foretaste of god's divine glory jesus had to climb another mountain the mountain of calvary and so jesus leads the apostles down the mountain of transfiguration towards the mountain of calvary when he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the son of man had risen from the dead when they when he said this they would not have understood what he meant it would only have been after the resurrection that they, that they would have understood what he meant unknown to them the glory of the transfiguration was preparing them to accept the scandal of the cross and their own persecution that would shortly be given most of us are not going to face persecution but all of us do face suffering in various ways we all have our own crosses we all have our own suffering 
and all our sufferings all our crosses are actually opportunities given to us to participate in the work of salvation and grow in holiness we tend to waste our sufferings when we do not offer them up we should use every legitimate means to get rid of our sufferings but as long as we are going through the sufferings we should offer it up in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass for the salvation of souls and conversion of sinners when we learn to embrace our sufferings when we learn to accept our sufferings we are given the glory when we will be given the glory that the father has given to the son i invite you during this eucharist to symbolically place your sufferings your difficulties into the chalice and at the time of consecration trust that just as the bread and wine will be transformed into the body and blood of jesus your problems your difficulties will be transformed into something beautiful Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be God forever Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the wine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink blessed be God forever Pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify O Lord we pray these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten son and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He revealed His glory in the presence of chosen witnesses, and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which He shares with all humanity. that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shown forth first in its head and so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up." for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. The first we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honours yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, 
in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.